Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 151. Day, day 3151, 3 is to signify the fact that we're in the third edition, third edition, day 151. We are about to start practice test number two that you will find at the end of the book on page number 481. Yesterday we finished test number one. So let's begin the exam number two on page 481. Here's the first question. Make sure the book is in front of you and turn to the page 481. Column A. In column A, we are given 3 raised to negative 1 over 4 raised to negative 1. Let's, let's work on this thing first before we worry about what we have in the second column. 3 raised to negative 1, of course, we know is the same as 1, one, one, over th one, 1 over 3. And 4 raised to negative 1 is just 1 quarter, 1 over 4. When we have to divide one fraction by another fraction, what do we do? We take the fraction in the numerator and we multiply it by the reciprocal of the denominator. The reciprocal of the denominator is 4 over 1. What does it boil down to? It's just 4 third. It's just 4 third, which is exactly which is exactly what they give us in column B. So it turns out it turns out that column A is equal to column B. The answer is C. Answer to this problem is C. Pretty simple, very straightforward question. 63% of people had no trouble with this question at all. Let's do number two, shall we? Let's do number two. Just give me one second. I did not get my thing here ready here to, to be able to erase the breakboard. So that was number one. Let's do number two. As we said, it's very straightforward. Nothing to it. In question number two, in question number two, they first tell us that x has to be less than negative one. That's the first condition, it must be less than negative 1. And the second condition that they give us is that x is not allowed to be 0. x is not 0. In column A, we have x squared plus 1. And in column B, we have x cubed plus 1. Well, let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can do. Well, first thing we notice is that plus 1 appears here and plus 1 appears here. Since it appears in the both columns, if we subtract 1 from the both columns, it shouldn't change anything. It shouldn't change anything. Of course, if 8 is bigger than 7, if, if, if 8 is bigger than 7, then if you were to subtract 3 from the 8 and 3 from the 7, it is still bigger. As long as we subtract the same quantity or add the two same quantity to both columns, it shouldn't change any. It shouldn't change the fact that one, if column A is bigger than column B, then column A will remain bigger. So subtract 1 from both columns. If we subtract 1 from the board column, we can knock out the 1. Now we are, just, we are down to x squared and x cubed. The second thing we notice is that we are told that x is less than negative, x is less than 1, which means that x could be equal to half or x could be negative number. x could be equal to negative, or negative 1 or negative 1 million. But the point is that even, even if it turns out that x is negative, even if it turns out x is negative, x squared x squared will always be a positive quantity. And we know that as long as we divide or multiply both columns by a positive quantity, we are okay. We are not allowed to multiply or divide the two columns by a negative quantity. We can't do that. We can't, for example, for example, we know that 8, of course, is bigger than 5. And if we take 8 and multiply it by 2, and if we take a 5 multiply it by 2, we are fine. But we cannot multiply by negative 2. Negative 2 times, negative two times 8 is no longer bigger than 5 times negative 2. Similarly, we are not allowed to divide. We are not allowed to divide the two columns by negative number because there's no the direction of the direction of the inequality will change. For example, for example, eight is bigger than six, obviously. So if you were to divide both columns by two, we are still fine. But if we divide both columns by negative two, we can't do that. This is no longer true. But we are not. This is not an, even even if x turns out to be negative quantity. We know x is less than 1, which means x is either a fraction, like a half, or a quarter, or one-tenth, or nine-tenth, or it could go into negative territory. But even if it's negative, by the time you square it, it becomes positive. So, 
and we are allowed to and we are allowed, it's okay to multiply or divide both columns by a positive quantity as long as you, you're doing it to both columns as long as you treat both columns in the same manner so let's divide both columns by x squared if we divide both columns by x squared this just becomes 1 and x cubed divided by x is just x and we are told that x is less than 1 we are told that the problem tells us x is less than 1 the answer is a answer is a that's all so that's just one way of doing it. This is the algebraic way of doing it. And sometimes it is faster if you can see the algebra. Now in the event that you are unable to see the algebra or, algebra or you get scared, you get intimidated and you don't want to take a chance with the algebra, then the only other option is to, is to plug in some numbers. If you plug in some numbers and you will see that we'll get the same answer. Let's, let's plug in these two numbers right here. When x is equal to half, when x is equal to half, x squared would be one quarter and x cubed would be one eighth. 1 quarter is bigger than 1 eighth, the answer is A. Let's plug in x equal to negative 1. When x is equal to negative 1, x squared would be 1, and x, oh, negative 1. x squared would be 1. X, oh, x squared would be positive 1, because you see x is negative 1. I got scared for a second. And this is x cubed, which means it will, it will be negative 1. Because negative one, negative one cubed is still negative one, and this is this is the positive one. X, as you can see again, a is bigger than b. It will never change because the algebra just told algebra just showed us that. Uh, what else could we plug in? We could have plugged in. Uh, we could have plugged in some positive, positive half. We could have plugged in negative half. It is not going to change it. You can sit there and try. You can sit there and try all you want. The answer will always be a, because that's what the algebra just told us. So algebra is one way of doing it. You can sit there and plug in two or three times and you will see the answer will always be A. The answer here is A. The answer to this problem is A. In case you're curious, the percentile was 80%. 80% means it's a straightforward question. Four-fifths of the people had no trouble. Let's do number three. Let's do number three. What does number three say? Number three says, we are told that x is positive, that's important here. Column A, it says 0.5% of x. And column B says one half of x. 0.5% of x. Actually, we really don't have to do anything at all. 0.5%, 0.5% of x, which means half a percent of x. A half a percent of x, whatever quantity is, if you take a half a percent of that quantity, obviously it is going to be far less than half of the quantity, which is 50 percent. 50 percent of x. 50 percent of some quantity. 50 percent of some quantity, of course, is going to be far less than half a percent. So that's one way of doing it. If you want to do it in terms of fraction, here's another way. Here's another way. What we need to understand is this. What we need to understand is this. 1%, 1% of something, 1% of anything, we know is 1 100. Agree? If 1% 1 is 100, then if you, if you were to multiply both sides of the equation by half, then half times 1, half times 1, half times 1 will become half a percent, which is what we're going here, 0.5%. 0.5%. The reason why people get People, people who got this question wrong is because they confused the 0.5% with 0.5. This is 0.5 of x. 0.5 of x, 0.5 of x is not the same as 0.5% of x. 0.5 of x means 50%. 50% of x. And that's a half a percent. They're not the same quantity. So, one more time. 1% 1 is 1 over 100, therefore half a percent would be Multiply both sides by multiply both sides by half. Then, therefore, half a percent would be one. You see, one times one is one. One over two hundred. So, half a percent of something is same as one over two hundred. So, let's pick up. Let's pick up the story from there. Remember, half a percent is one over two hundred. So, this is one over two hundred of x, and this is this is one over two of x. Multiply both sides by 200. But this is too much work. We don't have to do all of this work. And what we find here is that this is here we have x, and here we have 100 times x. 
In other words, this quantity is 100 times that quantity. Of course, this quantity is 100 times that quantity because this is 50%, this is half a percent. Do you understand? Oh, so the answer here was B. The answer to this question is B, and 63% of people got this question right. Let's do the next one. Number four. Number four says, number four says that we have a median income, median income of group C, we are told, was $300 greater than median income of group D. Median income of group C was $300 greater than median income of the other group. So, easiest, simplest, quickest way here is to just make up some sample. I mean, let's make up a sample where it's much easy, it's very easy, very straightforward to identify the median and the quartile. Oh, we have not written down what they want us to compare. What they want us to compare is the, in column A, we have the 75th percentile, 75th percentile of group C, and in column B, in column B, they want us to compare 75th percentile of group D. 75th percentile, what is the quantity that corresponds to 75th percentile of this group, group D, given the fact that the median of this group is 3,000 more than the median of that group. We have to compare the 75th percentile. So let's make up numbers, shall we? As I said, let's make up something simple where it's much easier, most, much more straightforward to identify the quartile, the percentile, and so percentile and quartile is the same thing because we want 75th percentile, so we have to be able to identify the third quartile. So let's do that, shall we? This is the easiest way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if you understand the concept, of course, you will see that in the real exam, you don't have to do all these silly things. You can understand it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They want to see if you understand the concept. So there are eight of them, which makes it very easy. Each quartile is made up of two members. Each quartile is made up of two members. Right here is our median. Median in this case will be four and a half. And here, again, this is the end of the first quartile, beginning of the second quartile, the median here, and the third quartile. We are told that the median, median of this group was 3,000 greater than the median of this group. Oh, it's the other way around. It's median of this group was 3,000 greater than the median of that group. Okay, but right now it doesn't look like it. Median of this group is 4.5. Median of this group is 4.5. And, and median of this group is 4.5. This median of this group is not. It says median of group C was 3,000 greater than the median of this group. So let's fix it, shall we? Let's fix it. No big deal. No need to cry. Let's fix it. We want the median to be 3,000 more. We want median to be 3,000 more. So instead of 4 and 5, this changes into 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. So, so far, so good. There we go. Now, now the median is 7 and a half. All right. Median is seven and a half, as you can clearly see, that is more than four and a half. So median of this group is 3,000 more than the median of that group. Let's compare the 75th percentile. 75th percentile is the third quartile here. 75th percentile here would be nine and a half. And 75th percentile here seventy fifth percentile here would be six and a half. So based on the figures that we have here, 75th percentile of this group is much bigger than 70th percentile of that group. It seems like the answer is A. But then, have to, then, then we have to ask ourselves, is this the only possibility? Is this the only way? Is this the only way where the median of this group can be 3,000 more than that group? Let's think about it. How about, how about, is it possible? Is it possible that maybe these numbers, instead of being, instead of being 1, 2, 3, 4, they up to 8, why can't they be, why can't they be 9 and 10? There you go. Oh, better yet, same as before, 9 and 10, 9, 10, 11. There you go. 
Now the median of this group is still four and a half thousand compared to seven and a half thousand, but the 75th percentile now is same as this one. It's same as this one. So now the answer is C. Before it was A. Before it was A, now the answer is C. Or better yet, if we can even make it B. We can even turn it into a B. Why not? Why not? Very simple here. Here we go. We're going to make it B. Watch this. So right now, the median is 9.5. How about, how about 100 and 110? We're just being silly, you understand? And this, instead of being 9, let's make it 90. So now we have 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. In other words, in this group, there were 8 people. One person earned one thousand dollars a year, two per two thousand dollars a year, four three thousand, four to five thousand, and then this person earned ninety thousand, hundred thousand, hundred and ten thousand. This is the group of students that we're talking about. What's the median of this group? Four and a half thousand. What's the median of this group? Seven and a half thousand. Is the median here three thousand more than that one? Yes, it is. Let's compare the seventy-fifth percentile. In this case, it's nine and a half thousand. Of course, as we clearly see, it's much. We, we didn't have to make something silly like this. Let's make it. Let's make it easier. Let's make it simpler. Okay, let's not be silly. Let's not be silly. There we go. So now the 75th percentile, 75th percentile is 10. Here it is 9.5. Now the answer is B. Before the answer was A, then the answer was C. In other words, in other words, just because the medians of the medians of the two group are equal, or if the median of one group, in this case, if the median of one group is larger than the median of the other group, that tells us absolutely nothing at all as to what's going to happen after the median. There is no guarantee that just because the median is greater, that the 75th percentile is also becoming greater. It's just it is. Just because the median is greater, 75th percentile doesn't mean anything. Here, here's, here's the other extreme scenario. Here, here's the other second. You see, this is, this is, we already done the work, it's three more, I'm beating the dead horses at this point. But we could have had this. We could have had just this. See, median here is four and a half, median here is seven and a half, right? We could have had Anything, anything that you want, doesn't really matter. Six, 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 six. They could all be same after that. Once we hit the median, which is the average of the middle two, just because this median is 3,000 less, 3,000 more than that median, doesn't, get, doesn't mean that anything that comes after is exactly identical to what happens here. Do you understand? The answer is D. The answer to this problem is D. And Fewer than, fewer than half the people, 45% of people got it right, fewer than half of the people got it right. And that's what it is. The simplest, the simplest, the simplest uh, example I'm going to give you is this, which is, which is very difficult to ident identify the quartile, but you will understand the concept. Here's the situation. One, two, three. One, two, three. What's the median of this group? The median of this group is two. What's the median of that group? The median of that group is two. Just because the medians are equal, or if you like, the median is three more than that, let's make it five. Just because the median of this group is three more than that, that does, it, that, that does not guarantee that what is going to come after the median here is necessarily greater than that. In this case it is. In this case, what comes after the median is greater, so the answer here is B. But we could also have this, one, two, and six. Again, the median is three more, median of this one is three more than that, but now what comes after it, they are all equal, they are both equal. Or we could have had this. Whereas, even though the median of this guy is three more than that, but what comes after the median in this, this group is actually more than what comes there. Just because the medians are equal, there is no guarantee that the 75th percentile is going to be greater, that the third quartile is going to be greater. Do you understand? The answer is D. Oh, I never did. Oh, I gave you the percentile. Fewer than half the people got it right. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.